Okay, welcome. Today I'm trying a new experiment I've been wanting to try for a very long time. I want to grow mushrooms in waste oil of some sort. So here we have a selected strain. This is just a blue oyster mushroom uh, growing on barley grain. This has been in the fridge for a minute. Uh, I've just sort of saved it for later and this experiment is a good time to use it. Uh, today is the 29th of September, so it it grew in this jar for maybe uh, a week, and then it, it was in the fridge for the rest of that time. Next, we have our substrate. So this is cocoa coir. I've heard that this is a good substrate uh, for mushrooms because it holds on to moisture really well for one, and for two, it tends to not grow mold uh, and encourages the growth of mushroom spawn instead. Now, for the interesting bit, the substrates that we're going to be testing. First, we'll use some brake fluid. So, if you've ever worked with brake fluid b before, it's really, really, really nasty. Uh, it's it's not, a, not a fun thing to get on your skin uh, or your or your eyes. Uh, next, this is strawberry flavored automatic transmission fluid. Uh, this stuff isn't very pretty either. Doesn't smell as bad as manual transmission fluid though. Um, the next, we have some used motor oil and I've also put slash coolant on there as well. So this is from uh, a bucket that I keep and store my used motor oil and I put coolant in there a couple of times and now AutoZone won't <laughs> take it from me and recycle it. So that's unfortunate. Next, here's some 20W50 motor oil. This was intended for uh, a motorcycle uh, and the weight is a little bit weird, uh, kind of an uncommon weight, but whatever. It's motor oil. We're going to test all four of these things and see if mushrooms will grow on them. So. I'm going to set up the tubes. I'll put uh, one or two pieces of, of grain on the very tops of the tubes, and we'll see uh, the rate at which the mycelia progresses through the substrate. Um, so this isn't you know, proving that mushrooms grown on oil or, or whatever uh, substrate we use. It's not proving that you can go out and grow mushrooms on that and then consume the mushrooms, that's a whole other experiment. Uh, hopefully I'll be working on that at some point. But for now, we just want to see uh, the survivability of oyster mushrooms in particular on these different substrates. You can see I have prepared the tubes. I forgot to mention that the coco coir was sterilized by pouring bo boiling water over the, the dried brick. Uh, and when I packed it in here, I didn't really control for hydration super well. I just sort of squeezed out the excess water and then packed it into the tube. Uh, and you can see there's still some air bubbles in there. If anything, I went a little overboard on the hydration, just sort of planning for it, it drying out over time. You can see here, that is the grain spawn in the top. So I just put a very small layer at the very top and that's it. And I'm hoping, in a perfect world, the mycelia will move down at a certain rate, and the rate will be different depending on the, the substrate that's added. So this one will be a control. It won't have anything added. So we're done with that. Uh, I've got a pipette here set to one milliliter. Uh, these tips are sterile, so I'm actually going to use a, a flame here just so I don't make my tips dirty. So we'll grab a tip, and this first one here is for brake fluid, and I'm just going to add some quantity of this until it looks okay, and then add the same quantity for all of them. So that's one, two, three, I think that's good. Uh, and it has sort of turned the mycelia brown. 
I don't know what's in brake fluid. If you know what's in brake fluid, please comment below. Whatever it is, it's uh, highly corrosive. So we learned that we want to use about three milliliters. So three milliliters of automatic transmission fluid. Yeah, this stuff smells pretty bad. Okay. So as I'm doing this, I, I, I want to talk a little bit more uh, about the reason why I'm doing this. So uh, if, if, you're a, <laughs> if you're a fun guy fan, you probably know about Paul Stamets um, and his talks that he does and the movie that he has and the books that he has. Uh, he always mentions this one experiment where they had three piles of uh, asphalt contaminated with uh, motor oil from a highway. And in one pile they didn't put anything and covered it with a tarp. The other pile they put some bacteria on it and covered it with a tarp. And then on the last pile they inoculated it with oyster mushroom spawn and put a tarp on top. And the pile, the uh, first two piles were stinky by the end of a couple weeks and then the pile inoculated with mushrooms uh, was flourishing with oyster mushroom fruit. And so apparently these oyster mushroom can live or break down oil. So that's pretty cool. Um, but the questions we have here is, you know, First of all, can we repeat that experiment? And second of all, are the mushrooms uh, consuming the oil and breaking it down into smaller uh, safe components or are they just existing uh, and consuming some other substrate and actually accumulating the oil in the fruiting bodies? That would not be good if you want to try to consume the, the mushrooms. Um, so, you know, the big experiment that this is all leading up to, hopefully, is to grow mushrooms on oil, because apparently you can do that, and then uh, measure the concentrations of uh, hydrocarbons in the mushroom fruit. And if, if we can show that... Uh, the fruit doesn't contain any kind of toxic compound, then, you know, we can use used motor oil as a, as a growing medium for mushrooms, um, which will, you know, sort of alleviate the waste problem of, of motor oil and also give a cheaper substrate to grow mushrooms on. So, final step here. I want to cover each of these tubes with this. This is called micropore tape. I love this stuff. Um, it allows oxygen and carbon dioxide to perfuse through um, and probably water too, but it doesn't let any contaminants like spores fall in. So, uh, this is what the control, this is what the control looks like before. I'm gonna finish covering all these with micropore tape and I'll be back with you. I'll be back with you in, I don't know, a week or two? We'll see if anything has grown. Okay, so now it has been nine or 10 days. Today's the 7th of October. Eight days? Seven days? I don't know. Anyway, this is the used oil, and you can see there's this very thin mycelia beginning to grow. Uh, definitely not, you know, super strong and rhizomorphic, like the control sample. So you can see these very rhizomorphic, you know, root-like structures in the mycelia. Um, it's really enjoying the cocoa coir, so that's that's pretty cool. Good that the control is growing well. The fresh oil sample has actually traveled further down the tube, uh, but with 
uh, sort of less strong growth. So you can see there's there's not really much rhizomorphic growth growing, going on here. It's sort of, um, I guess, fluffier. Uh, and I think what happened here is when I put the oil on top of the grain spawn, it actually washed some of the mycelia down further further down the tube, and so there's been sort of more inoculation points. So this one sort of cheated, uh, cheated the system and was able to travel further than the control. Uh, still pretty cool though. Next we've got the brake fluid. So you can see there's a little bit of white growing at the top. Uh, let's see. It's not super strong, but I would say it's still alive. So that's pretty impressive, because again, brake fluid is super corrosive. Okay, here's the transmission fluid. Again, we've got a little bit of growth going on, a little bit of white fluffy. Um, but besides that one little spot here, there isn't much growing. Uh, but, you know, still pretty impressive for, for being able to survive on, on that amount of uh, transmission fluid. So the growth is going well. I'll probably let it go for another week, and we'll check back in then. Okay, it has been a total of a month now. We can first look at the control here. Again, it's got that rhizomorphic mycelia. It's pretty much all the way colonized the tube, uh, and it looks a little bit, little bit lighter, and you can see that it's dehydrated a bit at the top. You know, thick mycelia, but it, it's definitely dehydrated some. The used oil has something going on. It's definitely colonized the entire tube, but again, the cocoa coir substrate is kind of pulling away from the edges of the tube. It's definitely lost a significant amount of moisture. Not really sure what those brown nodules are. Maybe it's, uh, you know, the, the fungi is trying to excrete some of the oil waste. Um, that's just a guess, I'm not sure. The fresh oil, again, you know, the substrate is pulling away from the side of the tube. You can definitely notice it here. There is some contamination at the top there, maybe a little bit of trichoderma. Um, and you can see, uh, again, the mycelia has, you know, colonized most of the tube. Um, again, it's just, you know, losing moisture. The brake fluid, nothing new has happened here, unfortunately. And then finally the transmission fluid. You might say that's mycelia. No, that's just condensation, unfortunately. Um, and no new growth up here. So, you know, this was a very rough growth experiment, but maybe it's a starting point uh, for anybody else looking to get into, you know, this potential renewable, um, maybe not renewable, but a green way to, uh, to use waste oil. Um, some things to note here, if you are going to do this, uh, I probably should have only used one milliliter of oil for this 50 milliliters of substrate. I think that would have been a more wise amount. Um, also, this micropore tape allowed a lot of evaporation off of the sample since I let it grow for an entire month. Um, the growth was significantly stunted because of the loss of moisture. So maybe consider um, a method that holds the moisture a little bit better, but still allows for the airflow. Um, and then the brake fluid and the transmission fluid seemed to not grow as well. So maybe consider using less of those or uh, don't use those at all. But the fresh and the used oil seemed to do fine. Um, the fresh oil did a little bit better at first, but the used oil seems to be doing better now. So. Uh, you know, that's sort of the advice there. Uh, hopefully this has been a helpful introduction to growing mushrooms uh, on oil. I don't know if there's many people working on this. There's a few papers out there that uh, have published, scientific papers that have published on this topic. The question still remains if the fruiting bodies are going to contain uh, the oil itself, a, a whole aromatic hydrocarbon, or if it contains fragments of the aromatic hydrocarbons if those fragments are toxic or not. Uh, so if, if anybody is working in a lab 
um, that has an HPLC or, or some other equipment that can measure hydrocarbons in mushroom fruiting bodies, you know, that's, that's a project to consider there. So anyway, hopefully this has been interesting. I will leave a time lapse of the growth at the end of this video. Thanks for watching. This has been DIY Biotech. Bye.